Hi everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this tutorial, I want to go over how to do variable text substitution in Xano and the three different methods or filters that you can use to accomplish this. Those include sprintf, replace, and regex replace. Now, depending on your use case, one might work a little bit better for you than the other. And that's why I'm going to go through each of these with some examples, maybe talk about when to use them. So here on my screen, I have the no code API builder open. You can see I have just this empty variable here and we're first going to cover sprintf. So sprintf will search through text and look for a couple different characters to do the variable text substitution is with and that is percent %s which is text substitution and percent %d if you need to enforce a numerical substitution. So let's go ahead and look at that in example. So I'm going to go ahead and say percent %s jumped over percent %s, okay? So what we're going to need is some actual variables to put in this substitution. I'm just going to use text inputs and I'll just say thing one for my first input and I'll do thing two for my second input. So if we go back into this variable and in this text here, you can see we have percent %s, percent %s, and if I go to add filter and I just search for s print f, we can see it formats text with variable substitution. And so we need to define each argument in our text. So we have two percent s's, so that's gonna be two arguments. So the first one I'll have is thing one, and the second one I'll go ahead and put thing two, right? So this could be inputs, this could be hard-coded text, this could be variables, so you can make it dynamic, right? So I'll go ahead and hit update, and it will look like this, okay? Let's go ahead and save this. And if I go ahead and run this, and I say something like the cow for thing one, and the moon for thing two, well, now our result says the cow jumped over the moon, right? And I could change this to anything, right? I could say the cat maybe jumped over the house. And if I go ahead and run that, you can see that the text changes and we're able to make this dynamic. Now, also, I just wanted to show you percent %d real quick. So percent %d, remember, enforces an actual numerical value so if I went ahead and put percent %d in here, well, first of all, percent %d is currently mapped up to my thing2 argument because sprintf looks for these uh, different arguments in sequential order. So let me just save this for now and let me add a new input and we'll just call this number and I'll come back into here and change my sprintf. So we'll make our second argument number and then our third argument is thing two. Okay, so we'll save this. And now we'll say the cat jumped over, we'll say five, and thing two will be dogs. So if I run this, we can see we get the cat jumped over five dogs. Now, I could have still used percent %s to accomplish five. There's just certain use cases where you need to enforce that what variable is going in there is an actual numerical value. And that's when you would uh, really want to use percent %d. Okay, so oftentimes you see percent %s um, used a whole lot. It's pretty flexible. If you're going to be using multiple variable substitutions, you have to make sure you have your arguments set up in the sequential order that it happens. So just bear that in mind. Um, a lot of times we'll see in the external API request function, right? Um, it can be used a lot in here. One of the common places we see is in the headers. Oftentimes we may have something like authorization, bear, and then instead of hard coding your token in here, you might see something like percent %s, and then you'd add that s printf filter. And then you might even have your uh, API key in an environment variable, like I have, for example, in this workspace. And so that would just take the header here, authorization bear, and then attach where it says percent %s, your actual API token, so you can make that call. So moving on, let's go ahead and next look at our replace filter. So right here, you can see I've already created some text, and you'll see here I have all in caps, name, 
enjoys warm weather and beachy vibes. When name isn't at the beach, name enjoys relaxing by enjoying a movie. So what I could do here, right, is I could go ahead and add a filter, replace, as you guessed, so replaces a text phrase with another. You first, so now you have two different places to input. Search, which is what we're looking for to replace. So as you might guess, it would be name. And the replacement here would be what we want to replace all those name values with, right? So I might just do my thing one input here and hit save. And let me make sure just to unhide this. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset these inputs. And obviously, I'm only using thing one. So I might say something like, we'll go ahead and just say Jordan here, right? So now we get Jordan enjoys warm weather and beachy vibes. When Jordan isn't at the beach, Jordan enjoys relaxing by enjoying a movie. So replace is really great when you're looking for a certain phrase and you need to replace it with the same thing over and over and over again. That's when replace comes in really handy. Um, of course, you could still use it in uh, a scenario like this, like we had set up with this authorization bearer. Um, some people also like to use it. It's kind of a preference, but they might go ahead and just right here, like in all caps, like token. And then if they go and find replace here, they could search for token and then same thing, go ahead and put in, replace that with their actual token. So just keep in mind that any, uh, any time that the search phrase is found in the text, it will replace it with the replacement. So just be very careful that that set of characters might not uh, doesn't show up somewhere else just by mistake or just by happen to be part of another word, right? So keep that in mind, but obviously still uh, very useful for many, many use cases. Uh, so the last one that we're going to actually go over will be uh, regex replace. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new variable underneath and we'll just call this uh, var2, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go first go ahead and get the uh, regex replace filter. So regex or regular expression, there's a whole, whole tutorial on this. There's uh, plenty of information out there on the internet to learn the syntax of this, but it can be a very handy tool, especially if you're searching for certain patterns in text. Uh, this will be just a, more of a simple example, but when I go ahead and look at this filter, it has the replacement value and it has the subject. So the subject is the actual text we're looking through. So I'm actually just gonna grab, we'll grab var one for this example, okay? And let's just go ahead and hit update. So the value here is our actual regular expression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for Jordan, right? Let's update var one again because we know if I input Jordan in thing one, name will get replaced. And if I go back into this filter and the replacement, let me go ahead and put my own name, Michael, and hit update and save. So if we go ahead and return var2 now and hit update, we can go ahead and run this. So at first we're inputting Jordan. So this phrase in uh, my function stack item two will replace all the names with Jordan, but then in function stack item three, we're gonna use regex replace to find all those Jordan names and replace it with Michael. So if I run this, we can see that our text now says, Michael enjoys warm weather and beachy vibes, yada, yada, yada. Michael got replaced with all the uh, instances of Jordan. So regex replace, super, super handy. You can use special characters and things like that if you need to look for more specific patterns or formatted um, text, email addresses, etc. So just keep that in mind. It's definitely a little more advanced. So if you're proficient at it already, have fun with it. Otherwise, you might need to look up some resources uh, online in terms of what syntax to use. So once again, we went through the different uh, ways you can do variable text substitution, one being sprintf, remember, which looks for uh, the arguments in text and the variable text substitution uh, that you can use is percent %s which is text and percent %d for enforcing numerical values. There's the replace filter, which you put in the uh, search phrase that you wanna replace in the replacement uh, text or variable, and then regex replace, which is 
really handy for uh, searching for different patterns and replacing that in text. So um, all very great tools. Depending on your use case, one might work a little bit better. I encourage you to try them all out though. And I hope this video was helpful. If so, uh, please go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video so other people searching for it can go ahead and find it. Thank you for watching.